Did you see some a real trail off in your numbers for December? As I said, fourth quarter you did terrifically well. Did you see some weakening in December? Yeah, well, you know, for us, for our business, we're global, so only about 60% of our sales are in the U.S. But for us, typically in our outerwear business, which is a big part of December, weather trumps almost any other economic it indicators. So we had a decent December, and we talked about it at our in our call recently. So, so overall, you did not see a weakening in December. Well, do you see overall in the marketplace? Did you anticipate this, these sorts of numbers from what you see in terms of mall traffic and store traffic, things like that? Well, you know, I, I have, I'm here in Portland. It's 5.30 in the morning. I haven't seen the numbers yet. So, uh, but it, it's not surprising if you take about a million plus people out of, the, out of the workforce with the shutdown and tell them they aren't going to work for maybe a year. Uh, you know, that, that's going to impact uh, retail sales. So, so give us your sense with regard to the numbers. And I can tell you right now the overall control number for the retail sales was down 1.7% for the month, which and the estimate was going to be up four tenths of a percent. So it was a really surprising number to the downside. Just came out a few moments ago. Uh, but, but does that conform with what you see as the business overall? Well, you know, we don't guide inter quarter, so we can't really talk about what the results for our company are. But I can tell you, typically, weather Trump for our business, where we have a heavy component of outerwear and winter boots with our Sorel brand, weather trumps almost any other economic indicator. So, you know, we had great weather in January. Michelle, you want to ask a question? Yeah, Tim, uh, this is Michelle Meyer from uh, Bank of America, Merrill Lynch Economics. So outside mm -hmm. of the near-term fluctuations, which weather is one of them, government shutdown is the other, what are you seeing generally for the appetite of consumers to spend right now into the new year? Well, again, uh, we're talking about a global business that we run here. So only 40% 40, 40 of our sales are outside the U.S. Mm -hmm. And I think in general, the consumer is actually fairly strong, healthy. Um, you know, there's some uh, discussion inside our company that maybe um, the smartphones now are so uh, advanced that maybe the, the, uh, the sales of smartphones uh, might be weakening and providing uh, monies for other kinds of commodities, including ours and, and others. So, you, as you said a couple of times, you're a global business, so talk about globally. Uh, we hear talk about a global slowdown, in part because of trade constraints. Are you detecting that globally? Yeah, I think in general there probably is at a very high level economic slowdown. We've certainly seen it in China, but again, we're even though at $3 billion approximately, we're, we're a small player in the business. And so when we have success, it's really about what we do with our business, which really is less impacted by the global economic uh, overcast. But, but frankly, I think the consumer globally is in, is in a reasonably good place, frankly. Uh, what kind of pricing uh, do you feel like you have? Uh, well, you mean, you're talking about our supply chain, what the cost uh, pressures are? Well, that, it, that well, well that's good, but I, and I was also uh, uh, dealing with your end user products. So, like, what, what kind of pricing power do you have with consumers? And yes, I mean, what pricing power do you have in your supply chains as well? Well, we, we lead heavily on, on uh, innovation for our products, so we try and differentiate our products from others. You know, we talk a lot internally in the company about there really doesn't need to be another brand of outerwear or footwear or sportswear in the world. There are plenty. So if we're going to run a business that's successful, we have to differentiate ourselves, and we've chosen to use innovation. So we have different ways of keeping people warm. Uh, cool in the summer, protected from rain, et cetera. And so we, we lean heavily on those commodities to try and differentiate ourselves from the, the you know, the, the uh, global plethora of uh, apparel companies. Michelle? Yeah, so one of the things that obviously matters when you think about pricing is how much competition there is. And now with the shift towards more online retailers, how are you handicapping that? Are you trying to move more of your focus towards online spending? Um, and do you feel like there has been indeed a lot more competition from online retailers in your space? Yeah, certainly in the U.S. I mean, you have to be very specific about these global markets. In the U.S., we have become very overstored. So we've lost a lot of customers, uh, you know, retailers that carried our products over the last, call it, five, six years. And we've replaced those those product, th those uh, retailers with either our own direct-to-consumer business or businesses with some of our retailers who have good-sized online businesses. And our own online business globally is around 11% of our sales. Mm -hmm. So yeah, consumers are moving that way, but uh, there's plenty of room for, for brick and mortar retailers and, and many are very successful.
And, and Tim, finally, as you look around the world at the various markets, where do you see the greatest strength in the demand for your product, and where is there some softness? There must be differences among those countries. Well, for us, our, our businesses in Asia are pretty good. Our China business is not growing as rapidly as we would like, but most of those issues are our own. So I think the Chinese economy is definitely weakened, but our business uh, reflects, uh, you know, issues that we have within our own company. We have a very strong business in Russia. Our European business is quite strong. But again, we're small by comparison to many of these global players. And so, uh, you know, we, we can be successful even in an area where, where the general uh, macroeconomics are not strong.